Right, hi everyone, welcome to our release day hangout with Twin Danger. Um, Twin Danger is the brainchild of saxophonist Stuart Matthewman and vocalist Vanessa Blay. Grammy Award winner Stuart Matthewman co-wrote many of Sade, right, biggest hits such as No Ordinary Love and Your Love is King. And Vanessa Blay is a well-known vocalist for the psychedelic and environmentally conscious rock outfit Beast Patrol. Blay also happens to be daughter of the free piano, free jazz piano pioneer Paul Blay, who's one of my favorite musicians. Um, Twin Danger has just released their self-titled DECA Universal debut album yesterday on June 30th, and we're delighted to have you guys in this hangout. How are you guys doing? It's doing really good. Yeah, awesome. great. Congrats on the new release. Um, so to start off, how did you meet one another? Uh, we, we met um, a while ago, and I was, I was working doing some songwriting with, uh, with this girl from Estonia, and uh, we were just kind of hanging out, and uh, we were just kind of joking around and she said oh you've got to meet this girl Vanessa that I've been hanging out with you'd really get on and I think she said the same thing to Vanessa you know that you know we'd hang on uh, we'd hang out and um, and we just kind of met up and then I'd, you know, I found out Vanessa was doing this really cool music and she'd send me demos and and I'd, I just liked keeping in touch and hearing what she was doing and then I guess three years later we ended up working together and, uh, yeah. oh, that's awesome any yeah. any uh, anything to add to that Vanessa no, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, so I know everyone asks you this question, but how did you come up with the name Twin Danger? Um, actually, a friend said it to me on the phone once. It was uh, it was not necessarily about what I think she meant, the way I connected with it. But um, it, I at first was like, well, wow, that'd be a cool band name. But as I really thought about it and discussed it with Stuart. It really fit for how I would describe that, that those two words together. I mean, it's not as, sorry, I'm trying to talk, but I can't even hear myself because it's <laughs> <laughs> big headphones. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do the half here. But yeah, I mean, that was sort of the original inception of the words, but, um, but the meaning of it has evolved for sure. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, so I know you guys have a mutual love for all types of music genres, rock, jazz, even film music. Um, so which musicians would you say have served as some of your key influences? Um, I think it's, I mean, we, we have influences on us musically, but I think maybe for this album, it was, uh, it's more kind of like minimalist kind of thing. We all like pretty mm. simple things. So whether it's, if it's R&B, it'd be more like uh, Al Green or Marvin Gaye, just really, really cool, sexy, and with jazz it would be uh, you know, Chet Baker, Billy Holiday, just be people that put a song across simply without um, too much showing off. You know? Yeah. That's I cool. mean, influences for the band or influences for ourselves? For both? Um, either's fine, yeah, whatever, whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we both listen to those artists, but I also you know, grew up with like really avant-garde free jazz. That was what I first heard growing up. Yeah. Um, which in a way makes for a twin danger kind of situation because I was listening to that from early early years and then I heard like pop radio and rock and roll and seventies rock and roll, you know, and I was like, whoa, like finally everything makes sense, you know. <laughs> um, and so I've, I have like a deep love for, I think we both always have for, and people all do now for like music from every every angle, every genre. I mean it, it seems to me like everyone I ask, you know, what kind of music are you into? Everyone sort of has a slightly puzzled look and goes, I don't know, everything. You know, <laughs> there's very few people that just, I mean, maybe, you know, you say, oh, I only like hip-hop, or I only like house music. But, I mean, it's like most people, it's just right across the board, really. No, it's a, yeah. it's a really I mean, difficult question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, we, we honestly, but both of us have a love of, like, um, like Black Sabbath and, you know, just odd, quirky uh, film scores. I mean, it's just all over the place. Yeah. yeah. How did you guys discover that you had so many um, favorite artists in common? That's all we talked about for the first <laughs> two years, I think. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think we used to do like little playlists for each other, like lists of like favorite songs and all that kind of thing. You used yeah. to send me movies on iTunes, do you remember? Exactly, yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, I, I might have gifted you Taxi Driver, or Taxi. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, seen it already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that involved. Um, so Twin Danger's music has been tagged with like, you know, titles such as noir jazz, sultry, bluesy. Um, do you love or hate those descriptions? <laughs> it's like, yeah, I mean, we can't, yeah, it's both love, hate. I mean, we, we can't, yeah. you, you have to kind of put jazz in the, 
in the genre. It's kind of, and, and we're always like, like a bit scared of that because people can can condemn instant like <clears throat> jazz because they, they may may think about smooth jazz or they may think about a bunch of guys who've been practicing eight hours a day learning a lot of scales, you know, and it kind of puts people off a little bit, and that's just not where what we're about at all, because we came from all the idea, you know, we love, you know, like Chet Baker or Frank Sinatra, it's putting a, a song across lyrically and, uh, you know, in a mood, which is what I think we've done. You know, we, we didn't listen to those people and, and copy it, it was just like, uh, we, we knew what we didn't want to do, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when people ask you what your music is, what do you say to them? <laughs> say it's not what you expect, but it's just what you need. Mm, I like that. <laughs> Stuart, how about you? Um, oh god, it's really difficult. I just just come and hear it. I mean, you, the, the people that come to our gigs, but very often the people who've maybe come see another band or friend of a friend, and they've heard that we're a bit jazzy, and then they're just completely blown away. They didn't expect to. To be into it because it's uh, we have an upright bass and the guy on drums swings for sure, but it's it's definitely more of a you know it's a regular band playing you know it's a gang yeah. of, a gang of people on stage and playing. Yeah. I mean for sure the uh, the record and the live show are very dynamically different. Oh, we made that record, we recorded it, and then we went to the live room, you know, and brought on um, players. So it's certainly become its own beast now. Yeah. And I think that'll really shape the second record. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, we, we might get some of those Black Sabbath influences in on the second album. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you have a particular idea in mind when you made the album, or a particular concept? No, it, it kind of it, it kind of evolved as we started doing the music. Oh, you've disappeared. Oh. Um, am I still there? Yep, you're still here. Yeah, yeah cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of did, we kind of wrote a song. We had no concept of having a band or playing live or releasing it or who would listen to it. We just kind of did it for ourselves, and it was maybe a song that would go on our, our playlist of what we liked. You know, we just did it for ourselves. We gradually evolved doing that, and then we had people interested in us from labels, and we thought, oh wow, we're actually doing an album. <laughs> and then we thought we should be playing this live, and we got a band together. But it wasn't like a, a thought-out process as such. You know, it's only kind of now we go, we're kind of f figuring it all out. You know, it's, it's <laughs> interesting. You know, a, lot, a lot of people maybe go in the studio and they go, oh, we're definitely going to do this album. It's going to be for this audience or this radio station or whatever. Yeah. We, do, we haven't done that at all. You know. Who does that, though? Does any band ever calculate oh, yeah. that? Absolutely. I guess like pop, total pop world. Oh, alternative bands. They know, they, they know who they're going for and what radio stations and what kind of mixes they should have and who should do it. And, you know, like, like what kind of mixes they should have? Yeah, we, we just kind of did it and uh, we did the whole thing ourselves, me and Vanessa, in a tiny little room in the garment district in New York, just not with no help or no thought of who was ever going to hear it, really. You know. Yeah. Um, so when you're writing songs, because um, I'm just curious about your songwriting process, um, do you guys come up with the lyrics first or the chord changes first? Um, do you get like inspiration like in the middle of the night and you have to write a song? Like, what's your songwriting process like? We normally yeah, go, sometimes I think. Yeah, yeah. We normally just have a couple of uh, energy shots first <laughs> <laughs> um, to get in that slow, dark mood. Uh, it's different. I mean, like you know, the songs on the album, like "Take It From My Eyes," that Vanessa had completely herself. And then we just kind of arranged the uh, the backing. Um, she'd already written the lyrics and melody, and um, and then other songs. Yeah, I think one song we kind of it came from kind of I guess jamming in the studio, pointless satisfaction, kind of messing around. That evolved into a song. Other songs, maybe I have some chords and Vanessa sings over the top. Other times she'll have the lyrics first. Yeah, like oh, it's always different. Um, I was just trying to remember the process of writing lyrics, and I was like, wow, I can't. Remember anything? I think I think I, I think I, I do. Some. I do remember the uh, coldest kind of heart. I remember I came home and you had sent me chords, and um, I sat down at the desk, and was, like trying to write it, trying to write it. Slept on it and woke up and and wrote all the words. Mm. It was like a immediate. You know, the whole song came out in like less than five minutes. Right. Wow. Um, do you guys have a favorite song off the album? When it counts is mine. Yeah, I love that song um, in many ways, but I love uh, just because just it, it's an unusual sound arrangement. It's the first thing that we did. Yeah. But I, but I love bits of songs. Like I love Save It. I just love 
the uh, end uh, the end solo, the trumpet solo. I, I could listen to that on repeat. Yeah, like, yeah. Just walking through New I York. I love quite the satisfaction too. The yeah. the harmonies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's different. I mean, uh, my favorite song, but is uh, like I think one of the extra tracks that you download when you buy the album. It's called Missing Her. I absolutely love that song. It's just all. It's, it's about what we were. We were both agreeing on that we loved like weird harmonies, close harmonies. So it's that, that whole song is like a, just a whole wash of, of beautiful vocal harmonies from Vanessa and Brass, you know. Yeah. Um, so getting to your live performances, um, I know you guys performed at South by Southwest earlier. You guys playing clubs in L.A., New York, um, and that you mentioned that you encourage people to dress up and get lost with us at your shows. <laughs> Um, so can you tell us a bit about the vibe at your shows and um, how your stage presence in Twin Danger is different from some of the other groups that you perform with? Yeah, Vanessa. I mean, yeah, I, th I don't I don't know. A lot of people have been saying lately we've been playing out live a lot and at festivals when we're playing for people who have never seen us or heard of us. Mm. Like, what, you know, it's so different and you're so engaging with the audience and I've definitely um, become a lot more confrontational the past six yeah. months I think with performing it's just been I think the nature of playing different kind of music in these situations for people inspires me to kind of channel that punk rock sort of like yeah. don't be scared you know like yeah. come on in and just like yeah. spinning people around and, and the dress up side of it is just because it is that kind of classy yeah. sort of vibe with the music and you know you want to feel elegant and, and we really love you know, when people dress up because yeah. they feel good, you know. It seems like in the, in the past, I don't know how distant past, that if you went to a, a grunge gig, you know, mm -hmm. if the audience would have a particular look. It's like a scene. If you went to like a punk gig, it'd have a, a kind of look. If you went to um, an R&B gig, like people would dress in a certain way, or like a new wave gig or electronic gig. And now it seems whatever gig you go to, everyone kind of just looks the same. Yeah, it's kind of no, there's no kind of looks or scenes, and we just kind of want that because of the kind of music we're doing, because it's kind of filmic. We just love for people to so the night has a look, and the audience is part of that look. Because we get dressed up, we we yeah. want to look like a a band, like a gang, you know. And uh, it's just been it's just cool when you're looking down, the audience looks like they're part of the band as well. Yeah, know? yeah, that's awesome. Um, do you guys have any pre-show rituals that you do before the show? Uh, Whatever drinks tickets have given us, I think. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. I usually, uh, I usually change into my dress really, really quick. Yeah. I, I, I normally run around the dressing room going, "Have you tuned the guitars? Where's the effects pedals?" <laughs> Panicking. No. A little hectic. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god! Last night was was about twenty five people in the room while I was changing. Yeah, I <laughs> I was just like, whatever, dude. It's not worth asking people to leave, you know. <laughs> just put your put your camera away and your phone. <laughs> um, so for those watching, um, Stuart's originally from London. Vanessa, you grew up in New York, is that right? I grew up in New York State, yeah. upstate New York. Oh, okay, um, but you've been living in in the city for a while. I have for more than ten years. Yeah. Um, so how have you guys found pursuing music in each of those cities? Has um, has London and New York, have, have they had a big influence on the music that you pursued? Uh, England, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm actually from the north of England, but yeah, I lived in London. I, th I think being in, in England, you, you're kind of allowed to do music that's a little bit more left of centre. You know, it's yeah. a bit, little bit more accepted people. So here but here you, you kind of put in, in little boxes a bit more, you know, with radio and press yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So, so in England, uh, people can, who are out of the norm, whether it's Amy Winehouse or Adele or whatever, you can be a little different and 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 stand out and then do really well, which is yeah. it's a bit more of a challenge here. But um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, New York, I, for me, like, it's a different kind of time too than short. You know, we have the internet and. I don't know, when I was younger though, uh, starting off writing songs, playing on my own solo stuff all over New York, just who I met by nature of, you know, what they brought to the table and how we collaborated kind of inspired a lot. Um, in addition to, of course, my influences I already had in the venues and the vibe of the city. You know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so which artist, dead or alive, would you most like to collaborate with? 
<laughs> Getting to some fun questions. <laughs> I mean, it would be. I mean, we're we're both like real Clash fans, so obviously mm -hmm. doing something with Joe Strum would be amazing. But yeah, yeah <laughs> Joe, I personally would love to do something with Brian Eno. Yeah. Um, I'd be I curious to hear if Jocko played on a record. Oh yeah. He'd be like, we'd be like, dude, no. No, we just sample the one note. <laughs> So, but, but I think, I don't know, but because we've had such a, so, so many people have said that when they see us live or listen to the music that they're getting like a David Lynch kind of vibe. They imagine us playing in this sort of weird, quirky thing with weird people there. So, I mean, I know that David Lynch produces and does his own music, so maybe that could be cool in the future. Yeah, that's we should go that's and, really cool. Not necessarily visually, maybe collaborate with him musically. That would be kind yeah. of cool. Totally. Yeah. We want to make a movie, though, too. I want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what would people be most surprised to learn about you? That, that I actually listen to really slow, ambient, non-confrontational uh, music 24-7 only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to keep things calm. No. <laughs> I have to think about that one. Stuart, yeah. you have an answer. I don't know what's surprising about us. I don't know. I, th I think maybe just, just how, if, if you see the band, like at rehearsals or at gigs, just the way we are and when we travel together, it's just so not what you'd expect from a jazz band at all. You know, there's, we don't talk about, like, we're not talking about, we're just having a laugh, we're just kind of hanging out, and it's, it's a lot of fun. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We, we get into all kinds of little, little adventures, you know, which we'll write about one day. <laughs> when right. they become, it's, well, when it's they become like rock and roll. Yeah, it's very much, yeah. Okay. yeah. Can, you, uh, can you give us a sneak peek of any stories or, or anything that comes to mind? Well, no, they're, they're not legal yet. So. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> when, when the laws are passed soon, we can divulge well, more, you know, more you know what I kind of, um, what I put together recently from talking to people is that it's like, I mean, it's not the most rock and roll way to describe it, but all the guys in the band and Stuart and I, I think, are, are generally really curious about other people and we're friendly. And so when we go on the road or we go and meet places or, you know, go to venues where sound guys and managers are just like, whatever, dude, you know, another band. It's like we, we engage with people and we hang yeah, out and yeah. ultimately that makes for just a better vibe everywhere yeah. we go. So oh, we end up amazing. having tons of free drinks, which ends up <laughs> more rock and roll night, you know. <laughs> it was really fun because when we were doing South by Southwest, uh, a lot of the time you because a lot of the streets are closed off, and it's just packed full of people and bands and people. So you kind of walk to the venue, or you walk through, you know, you have to get from one venue to another. Yeah. So we're walking through the street, and there's like six of us, we've all got, you know, it's like really hot outside, but we're all wearing black and hats, and like, we've got our guitars, and Vanessa's in her heels and short skirt, and everyone's just going, oh my God, you look amazing, who are you? You know, it's like, you know, because we, cause bands don't normally make that effort, so we, we were definitely getting some uh, notice just from the way we looked walking together, it was fun. Yeah. That was fun. Um, so I know you guys mentioned a second album. Um, do you have any other things on the horizon for Twin Danger? Um, I think we were, we're definitely itching to do some kind of uh, long-form video or short movie or some kind of story. Because that's how we kind of got together was watching movies and, and listening to soundtracks. So yeah. but definitely something like that in the future. Then tie that in with the second album. Just, just do everything a little bit more exaggerated next time. Mm, yeah. yeah. How about you, Vanessa? Yeah, no, I, I'm on the same page as Stuart. You know, we obviously want to tour this album. Um, right. I think, I think that uh, it's looking like the big cities and the festivals will be in the spring next year. So we might even have all of our second album songs ready, which I think would be good because, yeah. um, you know, the record was made like we were saying, you know, just for us and just in this kind of intimate setting that really wasn't thought out and normally people, you know, when you're working with a label, we didn't have a label then, you know, you need more upbeat songs, you want, you know, because when you play live, generally people want to be a little bit more alive right. when you play live. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we have some covers and we have a few songs and everything's more huh. upbeat when we play now anyway because of the show, but but by summer, uh, spring and summer next year, I think we'll have like a really kick-ass set. That's all we have time for today, but thanks so much to Vanessa and Stuart for joining us in the Google Hangout, and congratulations on the new release. For those watching, we'll have this interview available to watch on our YouTube page. Um, our username is Crossroad Media Net. 
We also have a very active website, crossroadmedia.net, where you can check out the latest on our artists and music leads. You can also access our Facebook, Twitter, and SoundCloud pages in the upper right-hand corner. Thanks again, and see you next time.